Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Farah and in today's video, we're going to analyze some code and find bugs in them. I have my laptop right here and we're going to do a line by line review of code snippets from this GitHub repository by SV Hack. Before we get into this video, I also want to tell you that this video is sponsored by SV Hack. Yes, we hack is a bug bounty platform and they have programs that are mainly based out of Europe, but you don't need to be in Europe, you can be anywhere and hack on Yes, we hack. They also do a lot for the community. So they have weekly code review challenges on their Twitter. They also have a blog on their website which has educational hacking content which is often written by hackers that are active on their platform. So they do create a lot of good value in the community. So if you want to hack on Yes We Hack, then sign up using this link and if you're interested in watching some code reviews, then please continue watching. So I'm on this GitHub repository and you can see that these snippets can be found for various languages like PHP, Python, JavaScript and you can also select the snippet based on the bug type. For this video, we are going to first select this snippet which should be vulnerable to an IDOR. As you can see, this snippet is written in PHP. I have also made a video on how I learned PHP code reviews. So if you haven't watched that video, then I'm going to link it here so you can check it out. If you watch that, you'll understand what were the resources that I used when I just started learning code reviews. Of course, I already had a background a little bit in web application testing, which helped me, but I did not know anything about code reviews. But for now, let's go ahead and start reading this code. So first we have a function called view, which takes in three parameters, sess, which stands for session, I'm guessing. Then we have user and we have ID. Then we have an if statement here, which says this comment says that this if statement is responsible to return the content only if the user is an administrator. So it's basically doing access control here. So let's see how that works. The statement says that if the value sesh is not this and if the user is not Tom, then you will tell the user that they are not authorized to view this content. We still haven't seen where these values are taken from or how they are assigned. So maybe we can figure out how to change one of these later. Because if we look at this carefully, we can see that it's checking for both these values together and not individually. For example, if an attacker were to change the session value to this, or if the user value were changed to Tom, then this if statement won't do any access control because it uses and and as an operator instead of or. Or would make this condition work even if one of these values didn't match for the values of the admin. Here we can see that the file name variable is set to id json where the value of id will be taken from the id parameter and then you will be able to read the content of the file which will be located at this path details slash file name. So the file path will essentially look like this. Then we have another if statement here which first checks if these three values exist. The get path should have a details parameter and cookies with the name id and u sesh should also be present. Now let's see where these values are being taken from and if we can change them. So the value of the id parameter is being set to the value which is taken from the id cookie. The value for the sesh variable is being taken from the u sesh cookie and the value for user is being taken from the user cookie as well. If you remember in our first if statement, we had realized that if we can change the value of the user variable to Tom, we can bypass the access control. And here we can see that the value for the user variable is being taken from the user cookie, which is controllable by the attacker. So for the attack scenario, all the attacker needs to do is change the value of the cookie user to Tom. Then the application will go ahead and give access to the admin's file to the attacker provided the id value is changed to the attacker's file id. But since the file id is incremental, it will be easy to enumerate. So this is how an attacker can find an idol here when they change the cookie value to Tom. So that's it for this video. If you liked watching this, then let me know and I can make more videos about these code snippets. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.